her brothers were down there with them, and one of them had a car, and I got ready to get married. Well, I slipped up there, and I got the bolt still in her dress, and I went up there, and she'd clean out the window and come <laughs> out, and then, uh, we got them to take us to Bristol. Ah. <laughs> and uh, we, went, we went to Bristol, and uh, we got a cab fire, and he went out and got the preacher. And then we had to go on down to Tennessee to an old judge down there that wrote the license, you know? Yeah. We went down there and got him up way in the night. <laughs> and he, uh, <coughs> he, uh, he wrote her license. And then the, the preacher, the preacher went with us down. He yeah. come back and said, "Now I can't marry in Tennessee." He said, "I'll have to cross over the Virginia line before I can marry you." Mm -hmm. Well, we come up there, and uh, he married us in the yellow cab on State Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something. That's different. <laughs> and, and, uh, it had been years and years, and the preacher that married us was named Sibley. And my wife, she was in the hospital, had an operation in the hospital and he come in to visit the city oh. and they told him what his name was he you know I said well you married us and that had been 20 years or more but yeah. she still remembered him you know? uh -huh. well and she was uh, I was 19 and she was 17 oh my goodness <laughs> we lived together 63 years isn't that something yeah and these last You've been doing there five years, ain't you? Mm -hmm. This last year has been the worst year of my life. Not bad. Because you need that many together. See, I was raised in a big family, and we raised a big family. Yeah. We raised eight children. Oh. And uh, then now then I'm down to me. Well, I'm by myself all the time. But I never I, I never had a large family. I just had a one daughter. But. That's all I guess I was supposed to have because I waited a long time for her. <laughs> now my but, father, uh, but I my, spent a lot of time alone. My father, there was 15 of them in his family. Oh my. And he was, he was a painter. We were painting some of them northern women. There. You know them, uh, that big plant you had over here where the river filled the mines up. They, they were the northern women, you know, that their wives. They come, there were northern people that come out and built that plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, uh, they was talking about uh, their sister. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to walk over here and take care of you. My okay. daddy said, Well, said, I was laid, raised up kind of long. Mm -hmm. I just had seven brothers and seven sisters. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I think it's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful to have. I had two sisters and a brother, and a half brother, but I never got raised with them. Everybody was, when two here and one there and one there and me in Ohio. So I, I didn't see my own father nor my sisters until I was 14. And then I saw my one sister. I saw her maybe once in between there, uh, the one in West Virginia, but I hadn't even seen my own father to know who he was until I was 14 years old. But. I didn't get to stay, be with them. And now I've been by myself again uh, for 24 years. Of course, I've had my daughter, you know, well, uh, until she got married about 20 were, years ago. <laughs> where you been raised with big families out of way? It's, it's hard on you, you not to want, have them, isn't it? You don't it? have no idea how long you're going to get. This well, I have an idea. Yeah, I'm sure you do, because I, I always like to be around. I like people around me. And yeah, I do too. I I've, uh, I've got a lot of history broke down in there. I got me a typewriter and went writing, you know, yeah. all that stuff down. And my eye went bad off again. And uh -huh. I had to go have them operate on. And then they got straightened out and, and they got going dim again. I went back down there and he uh, shot that laser beam in my eye, you know, and burned that stuff off. Uh -huh. And charged $900. Woo. And of course, Medicare paid 80% of it, but that left me a big bill. And left you a big bill, didn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Oh, I love I got I bought my typewriter. I never never hit a lick on one of them, and now I can, no, you, I can use it. Well, you know what I have found out? And Years and years ago, it seemed like everybody thought that when you got up 40, 50 years old, 
you are in the rocking chair and sitting there. But it's not that way at all. You can keep your mind going, and if you can possibly physically able to, you can keep doing and keep learning. My mind. You don't have to quit learning just because. It's the weakest part of battle. No, it isn't. I I can't believe that. (laughs) uh, Troubles me is forgetting people's names. I can't remember names. I'll, I'll wake up in that morning, some morning, you know, get to lay in there by myself, get to study. About somebody's name, and I know I'm well to do my own, but it just won't come to me. Yeah, but yeah. When, that's when not I unusual. Do that, I don't quit studying until it comes to me. Right. Uh-huh. So that's, where, that's where, what you need to do. <coughs> <coughs> well, I found out when you got older, you can still learn new things, and I'm still learning new things. Well, certainly you can if you set your head to it. That's right. I, I didn't realize that for a I long went, time. I, I, this one's for a fifth grade in school. <coughs> and, uh, after I had, the, I went, I made the <coughs> one grade, when I went to primer, stayed down one year. Put me in the first grade and I made two grades that year. Uh-huh. And the next year, I made a grade. And then the flu come around. Yeah. And and I took the flu, and my head was, my eyes hurt, you know, I, I thought I had a headache, and I couldn't hardly study at all. And uh, the family doctor told my daddy that they should be the Bristol to eye specialist. Yeah. And we went to Bristol to eye specialist, and he examined my eyes, and he told my daddy, he said, now you have him to cut half his studies off at school, and if that don't help him, why, let him quit school. So it'd be better for him not to have his eyes and to have it to learn. And, uh-huh. and uh, of course, I did after after I got. I like to go till I got to, till got to hurt my eyes. You know, trying to study. And when he told me that, I never did get no better. I quit. <laughs> <coughs> and you started working young too. But after we, uh, after I quit school, well, I went. I was, my daddy kept horses and wagons and stuff, and nothing, nothing through here, nothing come through here but what was in it, in a wagon. They, could, they couldn't get the trucks and cars in here. Well, they, really, there wasn't no trucks around then. No. And uh, everybody through here that burnt coal or wood, they'd have it. See, they worked the plane, and they'd, they'd hard all out all tons on top of tons of coal from they had a tipple. Yeah. They'd bring the coal in on the tipple and unload it and uh-huh. back it, wag it in under there and throw it full of coal. Haul it. They'd, they'd <laughs> weigh it and then bring, I'd bring it up in here and distribute it out. Yeah. And I made pretty good money. Sure you did. Back then. Oh. And then we got a big sure. contract to haul and haul and mining properties over here at the mines. Uh-huh. Well, someday I'd I'd hire a boy to help another fellow to help. I'd make 20, as much as $25 a day. Back then? Whoa, back in that was a lot of money then. You were mighty right, Ooh. a lot of money. Yeah. I know when I first started working, you didn't they didn't have wage and hour laws or anything, and you didn't make much money. When I first started working, and I went to school extra, you know, and took up a, a, a training for another kind of work, and you didn't make a whole lot of money then. Then things come along, got a little no, bit better. The wages then, like you go out and work as what's called common labor now, it wasn't over 30 or 40 cents an hour. Right. But see, we was contracting. Then when my daddy took the contract tearing that trussle down, he, he took the contract tear it down for $100. And he, uh, and then they give him $5 a thousand to haul that lumber timber come out of the North Oak. Oh. Well, he had a big, a new wagon and a big team of horses and, and he'd haul a, a thousand foot of that lumber at a load. Uh-huh. Well, he could, if, if he got tore down and got out, he could make two trips a day. Yeah. See, he made big money. Yeah. And then they'd give him, they'd sell him the wood where it'd break up, you know, for people for kindling. They'd sell it to him for 